Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles, where today we're going to be featuring... I don't think I've actually featured this tank before ever. The FV217 Badger, British Tier 10 Tank Destroyer. Don't worry, you've got nearly 30 seconds before the battle starts. Plenty of time to go away and Google Jingles FV217 Badger so you can come back here all sweaty and type actually Jingles. <laughs> I know how your minds work by now. Anyway, Placebo here finds himself in a, well, technically tier 10 battle, but the majority of both teams are tier 8, in this standard battle on the Muravanka map. Muravanka. This map used to be known as the Magic Forest before the 1.0 release of World of Tanks when they remodeled everything. And it was called the Magic Forest because of that forest over on the eastern end of the map that was so dense and heavily vegetated that you couldn't see a tank 20 feet in front of you until you basically ran into it. And because the team from the north usually managed to get into the forest first, what tended to happen on the south was that everybody would just kind of cluster up around the outside of the forest waiting for things to come out of it. And uh, every now and then some brave soul would foolishly venture in and he'd find a couple of enemy tanks in there by virtue of they're all instantly blasting the shit out of him. <laughs> Thereby lighting them all up as they fired for a couple of seconds and allowing all of his teammates to the south to get one or two shots off before everything went quiet again. And then everybody started looking for another volunteer to go back into the forest. Now despite the fact that those days are long gone, the same thing appears to be functionally occurring over on the eastern end of the map anyway, where Four or five friendlies have gone over to the forest and have been and are in the process of getting a damn good crushing at the hands of vastly superior enemy numbers. Now by extension, you'd be forgiven for thinking that the same thing should be happening, except in reverse, over here on the western end of the map, where eleven of the team's fifteen tanks should easily be able to steamroller whatever opposition the enemy team would be capable of putting up, given that they have committed so heavily over on the eastern flank. But, well, you'd be wrong, because this is a classic lemming train. What we have here are 11 tanks stopped dead in their tracks by no more than three enemies. Okay, maybe four. Not that that's any excuse. And Placebo is rapidly coming to that conclusion himself, so he's turning around, heading south, he's going to be pointing his gun east, digging in, and standing by to repel intruders from the Magic Forest, who have already made it all the way down to the far southern end of the map. And here they come. You know that mouse down there? He's got one hell of a job ahead of him. His job is to just stay alive for as long as he possibly can, and by virtue of just getting shot in the face by the advancing enemy tanks, he is effectively going to be scouting and spotting them as they open up. All these guys have to do is kill them. And the Badger, despite that miss, which wasn't the Badger's fault, you see Placebo, this tank is uniquely suited to this kind of thing. It has the highest damage per minute in the game. It only has a 1.7 second aim at times. So, you know, patience, young Padawan. I can recall when this tank first came out. I think it was about three years ago now, towards the end of 2018. Opinion was divided, with some people saying it was overpowered and broken, and other people saying it was a hot pile of trash. Let's just go over the reasons why people thought this tank was a hot pile of trash. First, the penetration on the gun. It's only 272mm. Yeah, we now live in a world where 272mm of penetration is considered bad. Although by the standards of other tier 10 tank destroyers it is. It's actually got the second worst penetration with its standard ammunition of all tier 10 tank destroyers. With only the AMX-50 Bosch B having lower penetration. With standard ammunition, the AMX-50 Bosch B has better penetration with its gold ammunition than the Badger does. Which was another reason why people were pointing at this machine and saying that it was garbage. Hold on to that thought. Now, let's move on to the next reason why people were saying this machine was bad, and if you have any experience of playing World of Tanks at Tier 10, you may have to strap yourselves in for this one, because the second reason is that apparently the armour is trash. <laughs> now, 
while it is true that certain portions of the front of this machine have 355 millimeters of armor, that only really applies to the area immediately around the gun mantle. Everywhere else on the front of the Badger, the armor is anything between 210 and 270 millimeters thick. Yes, only between 210 and 270 millimeters thick, and it's sloped back. Which means that pretty much everywhere over the front of the Badger, the armor is effectively 300 millimeters or more. And the side armor around the fighting compartment, which is 152 millimeters thick, is also effectively 300 millimeters thick, providing you can angle it at 45 degrees, which isn't too difficult thanks to the great gun traverse. So what's the problem here? Well, the problem is that 300 millimeters of armor is nothing at tier 10 if everybody's firing gold. And herein lies the real problem because this is exactly the kind of shit show the tier 10 battles in World of Tanks have devolved into and simply become a contest of who can empty their pockets at their opponents the fastest, and that is the standard by which the Badger was being judged. And by those standards, yeah, there is nothing special about it. Judged by any other standards, however, the, the Badger is pretty damn good. It's got 300mm of effective frontal armour. It's also got 300mm of effective side armour if you can angle it at 45 degrees. It doesn't have any weak spots on top, in the way that the Tortoise does. It's certainly not fast, but it's faster than the Tortoise, with a top speed of 30 km per hour. It has an aiming time of only 1.7 seconds, 0.3 accuracy, and a 7 second reload on this 123mm gun, which never existed, no gun of that calibre was ever fielded by the British Army, with 480 damage per shot, giving it DPM, of over 4,000, with only 272 millimeters of penetration, unless you press the 2 key, in which case that number goes up to 320. This is not a bad tank, unless of course you're judging it based on the expectation that everybody's going to be firing gold at you, and you're not going to be firing gold back. But even then, it's far from a bad machine. Unless your definition of a good machine is a Russian or Chinese medium that zips around the battlefield faster than other nations light tanks and instantly turn into heavy tanks the second they go hold down and roll their faces all over the two key. It's kind of depressing, isn't it, though, that the 11 of them who were over here with a 3 to 1 numerical advantage over the enemy team to the north have been held here by those three enemy tanks for so long. But if it wasn't for the Defender and T95 down to the south, sadly the mouse cashed in his chips a while ago. They'd now be surrounded on three sides, and the only reason they wouldn't be surrounded on four sides is because, well, they've got the map border on the left. While we're here, shall we go over the reasons why people think the Badger is good? A lot of these reasons are going to sound very familiar. It's got more than 300mm of effective frontal armour, no weak spots on top, unlike the Tortoise, and 300mm of effective side armour if you angle it at 45 degrees. <laughs> And the gun has 272mm of penetration, 1.7 second aiming time and 0.3 accuracy. I keep wishing Placebo would use that 1.7 second aiming time though. Probably be missing an awful lot less. But, well, it's understandable. He is getting kind of sweaty at the minute. <laughs> the team are holding on. Just barely. So, there's still two kills down. Oh, no, they've just lost the Defender. That's what we call the Jingles effect, kids. <laughs> the second I open my mouth, things start going wrong. Well, they do still have the T95 in the woods down there, which is a very tough opponent. So, hopefully, I mean, I don't know how much health the T95 has left, but hopefully he is capable of holding on. Ooh, he does not have a lot of health left. Oof. And don't forget, the tanks on the other side of this ridge will have side shots at that T95 if he has to turn to engage something like the IS-32, which we know is down there. From Badger's perspective, though, I'd be a bit more worried about the Object 704 and ISU-152. In fact, there's the Object 7. They've, in fact, they've both been spotted. Yeah, those guys are in a far more dangerous position, with only a TVP holding them off. There you go. You see what happens when you use the 1.7 second aiming time? That one looked like it punched right through the ISU-152's gun manlet. Yeah, terrible penetration. Mm. 
need to take out the object though. Oh, beautiful. ISU's still up there, but he's hurt. Of course, it doesn't pay to just focus on one target, especially when you potentially have enemies on three sides. This is actually not a bad position at all for the Badger, you know. Any enemy tanks coming over that ridge have their lower glacis exposed. Oh, the T-95 is taking a pounding, and there's the ISU again. Oh, no. Who do you shoot at? Good solid hit on the IS-32. You see, the problem for the poor old T-95, the Doom Turtle down there, is that he cannot effectively angle against everybody who might be shooting at him. We've got the IS-32 here. There's an ST-1 that was lurking around in that rough location and hasn't been spotted yet. And then other tanks like the... Uh, well, I was going to say the Emil 1951 uh, to the T-95's north, but it was one of the Progettos that got him. Doom Turtle couldn't angle against all of them. Four against seven. Almost a two to one numbers advantage, and also looking at the uh, health bars at the top of the screen there, almost a two to one health advantage, which is not good. There's the ISU again. E75 TS taking a shot at it. The ISU's frontal armor is not great by anybody's stretch of the imagination, but it does have an extremely troll gun mantlet, which. Ooh, spotted. Who's that? Who's that? Somebody down there. ST1 maybe? It's one of the Progetto's flanked around? Because now there's nobody down there. The mouse is gone, the defender's gone, the T95 is gone. They are now, not just effectively, but actually surrounded on three sides. Oh, took a hit there from... Yep, it's the ST1. I'm not quite sure how I feel about this. I mean, he did not see the tank that shot at him, but the hit indicator tells him who it was. That's not information that he really should be expected to know, but the game gives it to you anyway. Oh, the TVP's getting spanked. That's not good. Actually, everybody's getting spanked. Everybody except for uh, placebo. Uh, yeah, they're trying to work their way around. They're going to get the TVP, aren't they? Unless you can get a no clutch shot. Yes! Beautiful shooting. TVP survives for a few more seconds. The ISU is thinking about it. Come on. Didn't see that one here, but it looked like it went in through the gun mantlet. I mean, troll gun mantlet or not, it's still 272 millimeters of penetration, and yes, he's down to 300 health. He did hit him. He does kind of have progetto problems at the moment, however. The TVP is down. He's got one of the progettos. Still, that hidden ST1 is shooting at him from the woods. E75 TS with them, but they're both facing in the same direction and ignoring the threat from the rear. That M46 pattern just took out the E75 TS. Placebo using the E75's wreck to shield him from the rear while taking out the second Progetto. And it's it's here where the absolutely insane damage per minute of this rapid firing gun is going to show its value. Okay, took another hit there from the M46. M4, you don't want to be sitting there, M46. <laughs> it's gone from one against five to one against two. There's the ST1. He's able to penetrate and look like his driver's hatch. Down to the south, the IS-32. There was some great cooperation and teamwork going on there between the mediums. The heavies, on the other hand, not so much. Two minutes left. Why doesn't one of them try to flank around behind him? I mean, Placebo keeps looking behind him, expecting to see that happen, and also checking to make sure that he's not going to... You see, he doesn't want to climb up that ridge, because that's not just going to give him the top of his fighting compartment to shoot at, but it's also going to flatten out his frontal armour, which, remember, isn't actually 300mm thick. It only has 300mm of effective thickness, thanks to the sloping. And if you're reversing up a slope, you're flattening that angle, and that is not what you want to do. He's managed to disengage and break contact. They probably have a reasonably good idea of where he's going. Are any of them going to try to flank around? Well, actually, yes they are, but not in the way that I anticipated. I was expecting him to run straight into the ST-1 as he came around this corner. He kind of is, but not in the way that you might imagine, because the ST-1 is hedging his bets. He's parked up on the reverse slope of the ridge, so he can proximity detect placebo if he tries to come over the ridge, and he's turned the tank in this direction to engage him if he tries to flank around. Unfortunately, 272 millimeters of penetration, 320 if you press the 2 key. So, 
If the ST1 wasn't trying to flank around, who was? Well, there's only one remaining candidate, and it's the IS-32, who is doing exactly that. And because the ST1 spotted him, knew exactly where placebo was, and the gun turned around and pointed, ready to go. It's going to take two shots to kill the IS-32, and the IS-32 only requires one high damage roll in order to do the same. But his gun only has 221mm of penetration jingles, 256 if he presses the 2 key. Well, yeah, but if he'd stopped bouncing shots off the tracks and the upper glacis, he could kill him, because the lower glacis is only 171mm thick, and if you're attacking a target on a lower elevation than you, as you come over the ridge, you show the lower glacis. But, well... But to be completely fair to the IS-32, if you rewind this and stop and actually take a look at the match timer at the moment when he was killed, you can probably understand why both he and Placebo were sweating a little. And pause, the IS-3 screws up the chance to win the match, there are two seconds remaining on the clock, bang, with one second to go, Placebo clutches the win. So, Placebo and the completely fictional British Tier 10 tank destroyer, the FV217 Badger, with an Ace Tanker, Kolobanov's medal, Radley Walters medal, only one kill short of a Pools medal, Steel Wall High Caliber and Top Gun. Nine kills, nearly 10,000 damage done. Pretty sweaty game all round for Placebo. And for anybody else who was alive in the last two minutes of that match, I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.